a narrow victory but a very important three points for Real Madrid against Sevilla and Juan is also back with us fresh from seeing the game Juan how was that performance by Real Madrid and by the referee <laughs> Uh, seriously, I have to talk about the referee. I would like to do it, but anyways, we have to get used to this thing. It will happen every match, at least in La Liga. It will happen every match. Um, regarding Real Madrid, uh, we played well. I mean, it was a very defensively match by Sevilla. That was very clear. But we didn't stop attacking and at the end we found the resources on the bench that was good so we solved the game. Definitely man. The very fact that we wanted an important goal came from a very important player who was receiving a lot of criticism but he's vintage Modric. Ballon d'Or winner in a way you know. How special was that goal and you know how important was it for Luka Modric oh. to get that goal? I can imagine that it is super important. It's like he wanted to let us know that he's still there. He's still part of the team and he can um, provide provide good things for the team. So I think that he's very happy as we are. Yeah, definitely. Now moving from Modric to Lunin, he has been surprising us with his consistency. He has been putting in performance after performance. I think a lot of clubs in Europe right now will be looking at Lunin and thinking that guy who's going to be a number two at Real Madrid could be our number one. What should we do if that happens, man? Because he's been great in the absence of Courtois. We should uh, tell Kepa to fuck off, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, and try to renew Lunin. Uh, it will be difficult because we know that Courtois is already training again. He will be the number one, but we should try to keep, keep uh, Lunin with us. Definitely, yeah, man. Lunin has to stay. Perez, if you are listening, sign that check. Uh, we need him, man. What a great uh, performance. Wow, somebody who had a good performance also was Vinny Jr. From that wing, making runs, creating, dribbling past players, tracking back, defending and putting in tackles. A complete performance yet again. The goal was missing, but it is what it is. It's He's a winger, not a proper number nine. And especially in the absence of Jude Bellingham. Yeah. How was that? No, I mean, he plays like this every match. He always tries and tries. Doesn't matter what. Uh, same as Rodrigo. I think that both were good. They just kept trying. It's just that sometimes it's very difficult to play against these defensive teams. But they did well, I think. They did well, yeah. And the very fact that you know, Sevilla under Kike Sanchez Flores, a very defensive side. It is a evident 5-3-2, you know, five defenders guarded by three, two people set to counter attack. They had a plan to contain Real Madrid and a lot of players fell into that trap. But then we kept on trying. The very fact that Ramos was here, how emotional was it to see him at the Bernabeu? I know you just came to see him. Yeah, I always wanted to see him on live. Very emotional for me because he's one of my biggest idols, one of the biggest Real Madrid idols um, and also all the things that he gave to the country. I'm not Spanish but he gave a lot to Spain and it's incredible. Finally I saw him and I, I'm so very happy for that. Would you have uh, kept him if you know if we knew Milita was getting injured? We Should we have signed him in December, you know, one last dance? No, I mean... <laughs> He's in his level still. He's yeah. playing very well. You saw that tackle against Brahim and how he managed the defense. Top player, seriously. I like think that the best center back in the last 15 years by far. But no, no. I think that the decision by Real Madrid was good because we have to keep uh, the same part of the renovation. So, yeah. no, I agree with Florentino and Jose Angel. Now, sometimes, you know, these legendary players are like some ex-girlfriends you always want back yeah. for a night or two and then you're like, it's better that we had moved on, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. Love is love, man. It's just because it's gone. It's a very bad analogy to say, but I know a lot of people would relate. Uh, Rodrigo, one goal in nine games, man. The only goal, as far as I remember, came against Girona. What's happening to him? Is it like a pressure of a signing knocking on our doors in the summer? 
No, uh, I think that he's he's playing well. I know that he's lacking goals, but he's playing well. I mean, he's doing his thing, this team. And for the building of the game, he's very important. So, so far, and I'm feeling fine with his performances. Fine? Yeah. Yeah. He just has to step up on the business of the end, business end of the season, man. He will. He will. He will. Like he in the past, he will. Make him the past, and he will. You know, and the very fact that we lacked two of our attackers, Jose Lu and Bellingham today, and not all games will be easy, man. It's La Liga. Before you go, the staple question: Who was your man of the match? I think this time no one was that outstanding, so I will give it to Modric because he scored the winner, and yeah, he deserved it. Definitely. I, I would give it to Carlo Ancelotti for putting in Modric because when he came in, I had a feeling he's gonna score. I just had this feeling this is gonna be a goal outside the box. When it happened, it was a vintage classic Modric. Yes. Thank you, Juan. Like always, Thank you, talking to us. See you. Thank you. See Thank you. See you against Leipzig. Yeah, of course. See you against Leipzig. See you.